Assalamualaikum. Today we will continue with uh, section 2.14 which is intervals of concavity. So let us understand what concavity means. If the graph goes like this, this means it is concave downwards. If it's like this, this is concave upwards. So if you have a graph that is like this, and this is an inflection point, I, inflection point, this is an inflection point, which I will explain later. So if you look at this graph, you can see that the function is concave downwards from minus infinity until 2. From here to here, the function is concave downwards. And then from here to here, it is concave upwards. Concave upwards is a smile. Concave downwards is a frown. And then from here onwards, at infinity, it is concave downwards. So this is what we mean by concave downwards and concave upwards. So what we're going to learn today is um, if you are given a function and uh, the question is asking where, in which interval, in which interval is the function concaving downwards and concaving upwards. Yeah? Right. Uh, but before we go into that, I also would like to discuss about inflection point. This is an inflection point. The inflection point is the, po is the point where the function starts to change its concavity in the opposite side, from down to up or from up to down. Uh, so this is an inflection point. Okay, as long as there's a change of inflection point, uh, there's a change of concavity, we call it the inflection point. Now, if you're given a function and they want you to find where the function is concave upwards and concave downwards. For example, you have a function of x equals to x equals to 1 over x plus 1 over x squared and to say find where the function is concave upwards or downwards. And then number two, it says find its inflection point. Okay. Now, if you're looking for the uh, for concavity of the function, we have to do uh, we have to differentiate twice. Now, first of all, what you should do here is to find its domain. Find its domain. So when you look at this function, we have two terms, and we have x in the bottom here, and x also in x squared in the bottom for the second term. So this function becomes undefined when x is 0 in the denominator. Alright, so for the domain, it will be, domain will be all real, except x equals to 0. Uh, and then uh, what you have to do here is to draw a number line and I already explained to you a number line is actually x axis of this function um, where we indicate the domain okay when it says all real numbers it means that x exists from minus infinity to infinity for this function and then we have accept accept Except x to 0, it means that uh, when x is 0, we have an asymptote. And 
I always identify a symptom with the dotted lines like this. And a symptom means that the, the line does not cross this line. Yeah? It will start with a new line after the symptom. Okay. Next thing. Now, because this is concavity, okay, now C. So, the second step is to differentiate twice. Given function of x equals to 1 over x plus 1 over x squared. Now, because we want to find the concavity of the function we have to differentiate twice and how i am going to differentiate instead of using the quotient form i'm going to use the power rule which is much easier for me to differentiate so i change it to a standard form i change it to a power rule form so this is the same as x to the minus one plus x minus two differentiate once i will get uh, minus x minus two minus 2x minus 3. Now, if I differentiate once only, then uh, this is actually a slope form, a slope function. But I don't want a slope function. I want to find the concavity of the function. So I have to differentiate another time. So that, that gives me 2x minus 3 plus 6x minus 4. Once I have differentiated, um, I would like to change my f double prime x into a quotient form. A quotient form is where we have a common denominator. So what I will have here is 2 over x cubed plus 6 over to the x to the 4. Now there are two terms and the denominator here and denominator here are not the same. So therefore they are not, they don't have a common denominator. So to change it to a common denominator, so I pick x to the fourth. So this will be 2x plus 6. The both terms have the same common denominator. And this is now a quotient form. Alright, once I get that, d... set f double prime of x equals to 0 and then I set f double prime of x is undefined for the 0 I take the numerator the numerator is 2x plus 6 this is the numerator x to the fourth is the denominator so we take this one numerator equals to 0 here denominator equals to 0. Numerator is 2x plus 6. Equals to 0. Solve that. x equals to minus 3. Denominator is x to the 4th. So x4 equals 0. Ignore the power. So x equals to 0. So what I'm going to do that? Uh, do now. Remember the number line that we had just now? We had the domain from minus infinity to infinity. And then 0 is the asymptote. Alright. So we're going to carry our minus 3 to the number line. So minus 3 lies here. And carry 0 to here. And it coincides. So after having these points there, we can uh, it has created how many intervals? 3 intervals. So this is 1 interval. This is the second interval, and this is the third interval. So we have three intervals all together. So the next thing we do is to set up the intervals. So we have intervals. Okay. And then we have test point. And the last one is F double prime because we want to check on concavity, not increasing or decreasing. Call it increasing, decreasing, we use F prime. Concavity, we use F double prime. Okay, F double prime is 2x plus 6 
over x to the fourth. Our intervals is minus infinity to minus 3, then we have minus 3 to 0, and 0 to infinity. So we take a test point, minus infinity to minus 3, we know that minus 4 is in the interval, so x equals to minus 4. Do not, do not take minus 3 as your test point. You must take anything in between, but not minus 3, okay? Okay, why we cannot take minus 3? Because minus 3 is where the new the f double, f double prime is 0, not plus or minus. That is why you cannot take minus 3, yeah? And uh, yeah, you put minus 4 inside the double prime. 2 times minus 4 is... 2 times minus 4 is minus 8. Minus 8 plus 6 is minus 2 and minus 2 is a negative. Minus 4 to the 4th power... Even power is positive. So minus and plus is minus negative. So what does this tell us about the concavity? We know that from minus infinity to minus 3, the function is concave downwards because we have a minus sign. So how are we going to draw this into the number line? So we have minus infinity to minus 3 is here. So we just draw frown and stop here and then we have a minus 3 to 0 the next interval pick a point I think the best point would be minus 1 you can pick minus 2 if you want it doesn't matter then put minus 1 inside the f double prime of x so 2 times by minus 1 is minus 2 minus 2 plus 6 is 4 4 is positive minus 1 to the fourth power is positive Positive or positive is positive. So if uh, f double prime is positive, means it is a smile. Okay, so how are we going to draw that on the number line? We know that from minus 3 to 0, the graph is actually smiling. So we pick up from here. We know that there is no asymptote here. Therefore, the line has to be joined. Yeah? So pick point here and draw a smile. And because this is an asymptote, we know that the function goes all the way up, but it will not touch the asymptote. So this is how the graph looks like for this interval. And then you move on to the next one, 0 to infinity. Pick a test point, x equals to 1. Substitute into f double prime. 2 times by 1 is 2. 2 plus 6 is 8. So this is positive. Over positive. This is positive. Positive means a smile, right? So, you know that from 0 to infinity, the function is actually a smile. So, because we have an asymptote here, we know that this line and the next line here does not join. So, we have to create another line here. Start a new line. And there is a smile. The graph goes all the way up. And all the way up this way. So how are we going to answer the question? So we can answer the question that the, that the function concave upwards from minus 3 to 0. Concave upwards from 0 to infinity. Concave down from minus infinity to minus 3. Write it down. Okay? So answer... Concave upwards from uh, minus 3 to 0 and 0 to infinity. Concave downwards at one interval only uh, from minus infinity to minus 3. Now what about the inflection point? Inflection point is not an interval. Inflection point is a coordinate. We want to find where, if there is an inflection point. So if you look at the graph, we see that there is a concave down. And then it starts to change its concavity in the opposite way, right? Concave down and then up. So
So we know that at this point, the function has an inflection point. And what the point is that? X equals to minus 3. So it's actually a point, but not interval. So inflection point here will be X equals to minus 3. Okay. So if you look, if you have, uh, if you look at your workbook, uh, at the end part of the section, it says find the inflection point of a function without asking you to find the intervals of concavity. So, um, if if they ask for our inflection point, the step the steps are exactly the same as finding the intervals of concavity. But your answer is going to be different. Your answer will be the inflection point is so and so and so. Yeah. Do not answer for intervals of concavity because they don't ask for that. They only ask for inflection. Okay, I hope you understand this uh, topic. We're going to do another example. Find the inflection point. Find. Or maybe, okay, find the inflection point. Okay. Suppose I have only one question. Find the inflection point of function of x equals 6x 2 over 3 minus 4x okay. as I said earlier if you want to find the inflection point the workings is exactly the same as finding the intervals of concavity so the step one would be find the domain of the function right what is the domain of the function And the domain of the function, you can see that for this function, it does not have a denominator. Right? Uh, it does not have ln, it does not have square root. Right? So this one will be all real numbers. Then we draw the number line. The number line will be, uh, so it says here all numbers, so you know that the function has values from minus infinity to infinity. And does it have an asymptote? It does not have an asymptote because the domain is all real numbers. Yeah? Uh, early on, we had all real numbers except x equals to 0. So we know 0 is an asymptote, but here we don't have any. So therefore, it doesn't have an asymptote. The function is continuous from minus infinity to infinity because the domain is all real numbers. So we move on to the next step. We want to find the inflection point. So for inflection point also, we have to find f double prime of x. Because to get the inflection point, it has to come from the intervals of concavity. Yeah. Right, so let's differentiate that twice fx equals to 6x to third minus 4x differentiate again f prime of x equals 6 times 2 third is 12 over 3 12 over 3 is 4x 2 third minus 1 is minus 1 over 3 minus 4 the f prime differentiate again because we want to find inflection point. 4 times by minus 1 third is minus 4 over 3x. Minus 1 third minus 1 is minus 4 over 3. Change that to a standard form. Minus 4 is a constant. So you have put a minus 4 on top. 3 is a constant. This is x to the power of minus 4 over 3. We have a negative sign, so we bring it down. x 4 over 3. Okay, so this is a quotient form. Right, now what do we do? D set f double prime of x equals to 0. f double prime of x is undefined. We 
take the numerator minus 4 equals to 0 which is impossible so we don't have any any point that has the function double prime x equals to 0 and then we take the denominator equals to 0 ignore the 3 is a constant ignore the power we just take the x x equals to 0 so what do we do with the zero? Any points that we get from here? Because this is where the function double prime is undefined. So we want to put that onto the number line. Bring it onto the number line so zero is here. Okay. So from then on, we know that there are how many intervals? We have two intervals. Minus infinity to zero is one interval. Zero to infinity is another interval. So we set up the intervals. This will be E. Intervals. Test point. And F double prime of X because we want to find the inflection point. Which is minus 4 over 3X. 4 over 3. Which is minus 4 3 x to the fourth cube root we change it to the form yeah so minus infinity to zero zero to infinity so take a test point from minus infinity to zero x equals to minus one put inside the double prime so minus four is a negative so we have a negative value And then we have a minus 1. Minus 1 to the 4th is 1. Minus 1 times minus 1 times minus 1 times minus 1. 4th power. So we have a positive value. Cube root of 1 is 1. Times by 3 is positive. So that means we have a negative. So double prime negative means a frown. Okay. So we draw this on the number line. And 0 is not a asymptote, right? Because the domain is already numbers. So we draw a frown from here to here. Stop there. Next, from 0 to 1, we take another test point. x equals to 1. Put inside, minus 4 is a constant value. Negative. Put 1 here. 1 fourth is 1. Cube root of 1 is 1. Times by 3 is 3. 3 is positive. So this is negative. So this tells us that from 0 to infinity, the function is a frown. And the function is a frown like this. Sambung, yeah? Join it together. Okay. So let's answer the question. Find the inflection point of fx equals to 6x to 3rd minus 4x. We know for a, to get inflection point, there must be a change of concavity from down to up or up to down. What we have here is down and down. So what does this tell us? That there is no inflection point for that function.